the, the hook for me was COVID triggered three years ago. Mm. Governments just started printing money. And I studied economics and I just knew instantly, God, if you can just, if you can print, and I knew that fr I understood fractional reserve banking. So I understood that they lifted the laws to infinity. So it's no longer even 10%. Yeah. So banks didn't even need to hold your reserves. So they still don't need to hold any reserves of your money. But most people don't know that. Um, so now if everybody went to go and get their money, the banks wouldn't have it, which is a bit of a problem. And that's starting to happen, right? We're starting to see that, which is why Silicon Valley Bank, you know, collapsed a week ago. Um, and then got bought out for a dollar. Um, and then governments backstop these banks by printing more money. Yeah, because there's the contract law, you have to buy HSBC bought them for a dollar because you have to pay something oh, to own them, right? So it was basically for nothing. Yeah. And then what do governments do? They backstop the banks by just saying, don't worry, we'll print our way out of the problem. And then they have to service the debt. And then you have this spiraling situation where they can't print quick enough to service the debt to prevent the currency from failing. And the only thing keeping these currencies uh, going, or the US dollar going, is, is the petrodollar. So in order to buy oil, you have to buy US dollars. That, that's literally the last thing keeping the US dollar going. So I think this is a very interesting concept, but I don't think most people understand it because it also t takes, it took me a long time to get it, to yeah. actually purely get it. When you say, for, as an economist, when you say that debt, the government is in debt to... Kanye actually asked this question on Joe Rogan's podcast. He said, people say American, America is $2 trillion in debt. Well, it's more. But to who are they debted to? So when you say that they have to print to service the debt, who's debt? So the, the, the governments have got two ways to raise money. They can either come to you and say, right, we need to go to war. To pay for that war, we're going to increase your income tax, right? They're going to tax you. Yeah. That's one option. Now, obviously, if taxpayers could choose, they would say no. Yeah. Because they'd say, I don't want to be taxed to go to war, right? So their, their other option is to say, well, we're just going to go to the printer, literally the Federal Reserve, and we're going to just print a bit of money, which we'll pay back. Mm. But every time you print money and you increase the money supply, you debase the value of that money. So what does that mean? It means that the reason prices of everything have doubled in the last two years is because you've increased the money supply by 50%. One article that 100,000 US dollars in New York is actually worth 36 bucks. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. So, You're poorer. You've just been stolen. The government's stolen. Me above what we would normally end up. It's kind of crazy that this is, that is when you, when you say, the Bitcoiners would say something like, the government is stealing from you. And it's actually with exactly what happens. But somehow it's a very difficult concept for people to understand that, like, you are being screwed up, basically, right? Mm -hmm. By. That though, it's also who's saying. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yes. Like no one, there's no accredit. People don't trust the Bitcoin community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but but also I think because it happens so indirectly yeah. that it's it's not there. Yeah. Because if you say stealing, people imagine like breaking into your wallet and take. Right, right. Well, but like it's exactly what's happening. Like you know, you print money, you give it to whoever, and then you have to pay back. It's also because you can't do anything about it. So when you, when you give someone this insane idea, because it does feel a bit insane, you go, I don't really know what to do with that, so I'm just going to carry on with my life. Mm. Because if I'm to try and internalize that and figure out what to do, I'm going to go mad. But so the only solution is being Bitcoin and crypto and entering these markets that people don't understand. I think, I think the, the solution is you have to find a lifeboat. I call them lifeboats. It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. It could be real estate. It could be gold. It can be the thing that you understand that is appreciating in value quicker than the rate of inflation. So the rate of inflation is 20%, yeah. probably. Yeah. You need to find an asset that is growing in value by at least 20% so that you're not... You're, you're not getting poorer over time. Getting right? poorer. Everyone's got most... The, the rich have got super rich mm. because they've printed money and then they've invested in super luxury assets. You know, luxury assets have gone crazy, right? Yeah. Miami Beach real estate... Um, yeah, uh, you know, fine art, jewelry, Dubai. I mean, look at all the money that's in Dubai, right? Yeah, right. So, hey, listen, if you enjoyed this small piece of a long form podcast interview that I just did, I recommend that you go to Survival Skills Podcast and watch the entire interviews without any delays or without ads and distraction. The podcast name is Survival Skills Podcast, it's available on iTunes, YouTube. Spotify and all other platforms. Search it, find it, go there and subscribe and enjoy the entire, entire episode. Okay. Have fun. Peace.